Hello there, I'm Teacher Rai of the City Schools Division of Aparong. Welcome to the Philippine Politics and Governance Instructional Video Series. Today, we're going to start with the state. Obviously, the state is the most significant actor in international relations. Many people argue that the state is in decline, that it's losing its power. But whatever you might think of the state, it is pretty clear that global politics happen the way it does because of the state. So, let's begin. There's a lot of different definitions of the state, and you can even look them up if you like. But the one we're going to work with is the state as a political entity and legal entity. First, what is political entity? It is a unit with political responsibilities. Again, it is a unit with political responsibilities. On the other hand, legal entity pertains to a unit that has legal rights and obligations. Take note, legal rights and obligations. Well, I'm just going to get a map of a state, which is our country, Philippines. Well, all states have a certain set of characteristics or elements. The first element is they all have a border. That is to say, they have a clearly defined territory where it's clear what is internal to the state and what is external to the state according to article 1 of 1987 philippine constitution the philippine archipelago with all the islands and waters embraced therein and all other territories over which the philippines has sovereignty and jurisdiction consisting of its terrestrial fluvial and Aerial domains. Second, all states have a permanent population. Essentially, people within the state for the most part are citizens and they all look very happy, though not all citizens feel the same. Well, the whole idea, of course, then is all countries have permanent population. And China is an example of a state with 1.3 billion population, while our country, Philippines, has 106.7 million population as of 2018. Third, all states have a central government. And this government symbolizes that all have certain responsibilities. They all control the territory and they also control the administration of the territory they pass rules or bills to create laws etc well the central government basically runs everything internal to the state we could otherwise say that a government is the machinery of the people where their hopes and aspirations are expressed formulated and realized Fourth, all states are considered sovereign, at least in principle, and what this means is that all states in principle are free from interference from the outside in domestic affairs, and states take this seriously. You will often see in global politics that states complaining another state or a group are doing something that is interfering in the domestic affairs of their country, and they'll get so upset really mad about that because they consider it as a violation of their sovereignty which only noted that sovereignty is the only and their supreme power to command and enforce obedience well the fifth element of states is that they are recognized by each other that is to say if we have another state let's call it state b can choose to recognize this, which we call State A. Shall we say, State A is the Philippines, while State B 
is China. By extending that recognition, what China is saying is that we recognize you, State A or Philippines, as a political and legal entity. And presumably, Philippines then does the same for China in return. And this is important because not all states actually recognize other states as a political and legal entities. And if they don't, that really says something because essentially what one country is saying to another is we don't recognize your right to exist. And that can be a very important issue in global politics. In addition, states that are recognized will also be recognized in the form of a legal standing in international institutions. Say for example, both countries, Philippines and China, will be members of the United Nations. And therefore will have a seat in the General Assembly. And it couldn't be denied that the state is granted international status, whether implied or expressed. The sixth characteristic that all states share is they have a monopoly over the legitimate use of force inside the state. Only the government, say for instance, can have a police force. So, I'll place the police officer there. The whole idea then is the government is responsible for maintaining order and security within the state. So take all this together, territory, population, government, sovereignty, recognition, and monopoly on the use of force. And there you have the central characteristics or elements of the modern state. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video lesson that I have lined up for you. Please join me next time. Barak Allah Fek. May God bless you.